This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be creating some image effects that we can put onto our snapshot camera. We could use these similar to how we use filters in an image or camera app on your phone, or you can simply use them to apply a particular effect for either game purposes or to give your screenshots a cool effect as you're developing your game. So the easiest way for us to apply effects to our camera is using Unity's post-processing stack, which we're going to get from the Asset Store. Go to Window, Asset Store, and I'm going to search as soon as we connect for post-processing stack. And I can simply click the Import button here might say something slightly different for you if you haven't um, imported this already in a previous project. And I will click import, and this will just take a minute to load. Once that's imported, you'll see a post-processing folder which contains all of the files related to this feature. Uh, we're not actually gonna mess with anything in there. However, we are gonna create a new folder which I'm going to call filters. And this is where we're going to store the different filters we're going to apply. Now, in order to see the changes that we're making, we're actually going to, uh, for right now at least, apply the filters to our camera immediately. However, we're eventually going to make this a little bit more automated of a process to assign filters when we want them. Um, for right now, I can actually close this asset store tab. We don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna to go to my snapshot camera object and I'm going to add the post-processing behavior component to it. And you'll see that this takes one, uh, one property here, which is the post-processing profile, and these are what we're gonna create. These are our filters for our purposes. So I'm gonna go into the filters folder here. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to create the new post-processing profile, which appears here under scene and prefab once you've um, imported the post-processing stack. So I'll click on that. And I'm going to create a few of these. And first one I'm just going to call old film. I'm just going to create all of these right now and then we can assign values to each of them. This one I'm going to call ultra real. And then lastly we're going to do one more. And I'm going to call this one just trippy. Okay. So in order to see what we're doing with each of these, because right now I can check these things off and we don't actually see anything change because it hasn't been applied to a camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a snapshot camera. I'm gonna drag old film onto that profile property. And what happens is that's now going to start impacting what we see here in this view. Right now there aren't any, um, we haven't actually put any settings in that are gonna make a dramatic change so we don't see anything happen here. But now if I go to old film, what I can do is I can start checking off some of these boxes and we'll see what happens. So for old film effect, what I wanna do is I wanna make this kind of like a sepia tone, um, give it kind of a vignette and like a film grain. So I'm gonna click on vignette here and that adds these kind of darkened corners. Uh, likewise, I'm gonna choose grain to add a little bit of graininess there. I might even increase the intensity of that up a bit and I'll turn off color on that. Um, so we definitely see a lot of that uh, grain on the film. And then lastly, I'm gonna to go to color grading check that off. I'm going to turn off the tone mapper, set that to none, uh, but I'm going to turn up the temperature quite a bit to something like 93 looks good there, so we get a much, you know, more yellows and reds in the tone here, and I'm going to turn down the saturation, saturation um, all the way to zero, so we get this very sepia tone, uh, kind of brown um, look. So that is our first filter that we're going to have. Go back to snapshot camera. Now I'm going to drag ultra real on and replace the processing behavior. We see this resets back to normal. This one I just want to get a couple of kind of traditional kind of video gamey um, filters lately. We're going to do some bloom on this one. Um, I'm going to increase on this one. I'll increase the intensity up a bit as well as the radius a little bit. So we get, you can see here a little bit of the bloom creeping in on the box that we have there. I'm not going to worry about anything else on that one. However, I will also add um, some ambient occlusion. And that gives us some more shading in the kind of the corners. Um, there are other ways to do ambient occlusion, but this is just a kind of quick and dirty way to do it using the camera 
and what the camera is seeing. And lastly, I'll once again add color grading. In this case, I'll keep the neutral tone mapper. I'm gonna increase black in from 0.2 all the way up to its maximum of 0.1, which creates a lot more contrast in here. I'll also up the temperature just a little bit to something like uh, seven is good. And then I'll drop the tint down just a hair too, um, just to give it a slightly different uh, coloring than what we see in the main view. And so that's fine for ultra real. And then lastly for trippy, we're gonna kind of really adjust some stuff here. Uh, close these out, we don't need those. I will do some uh, color grading. In this case, we're going to just grab on hue shift here and drag that all the way up to 180. Oh, I'm not seeing it here because I didn't apply it to my snapshot camera. I will do that now. So once again, just drag it into the post-processing behavior. And we see with that hue shift 180, it basically changes every color to its opposite on the color wheel. So the blue here becomes a bright yellow. The sky likewise is getting a yellow tint there. Um, the other thing I wanted to do for this trippy was I wanna go to the chromatic aberration. I'm gonna check that one off and I'm going to um, turn the intensity all the way up to one. We see it starts to create this kind of a bleeding of color there and I am going to add a spectral texture. Uh, when you import the post-processing stack, it uh, imports a lot of these images. And down here where you see these spectral Lutz, these are kind of those textures that you can use um, that will kind of change what the coloring looks like here. I'm gonna use this um, red-blue one. We'll put that there. And so now we have this sort of trippy, weird color changing one. Now the next thing I wanna do, I wanna make sure I do right now, is I do wanna remove this post-processing profile right now, because we're gonna actually create a script that'll let us cycle through these in real time rather than having to assign them and then play our game. So I'm going to click on this and hit delete to remove it so we have no profile being applied to our snapshot camera right now. And we are gonna go into scripts and create a new C-sharp script called camera filters. I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. And first thing we need is we need to actually add the post-processing namespace in order to access uh, those features. So we're going to say using Unity Engine dot post processing, and that will give us access to those. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that any um, any object that has this camera filters on it actually has a post-processing behavior on it so that we can assign um, these filters. So I'm going to use a require component attribute. I'll do square bracket require component type of post processing behavior. And that just makes sure for us that that component is attached and therefore we can actually interact with it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a post processing behavior variable. I'm just gonna call this post and we're gonna assign the attached component to this um, in the start method. However, we also want a place to store our filters. So I'm gonna create a, another uh, variable here. This one's gonna be a public variable. It's gonna be an array of post processing profiles, which are those files we made with the old film, the trippy settings, etc. And I'm gonna make this an array and I'm gonna call this filters. I don't have to assign anything to this because I'm gonna be working with this in the inspector itself. And then lastly, I'm gonna have an integer variable which is gonna be called current filter. And I'm gonna set it equal to negative one. Now negative one basically is going to mean there is no filter and then zero and up will be the indices of the array itself. Okay, with that, I'm going to into our going into our start method here, and we're going to actually assign um, this post. But first thing I want to do is I want to actually check do we have any filters? Because if we don't have any filters, then we really have no purpose for this component, and we can just remove it off the camera. So we'll say first we'll say if filters dot length is equal to zero. Um, destroy this and that will just destroy this particular component not the entire object and we can return we don't need to do anything else in this start uh, method however if we do have some filters then we can actually go through the process of getting this post processing behavior component so we'll say post equals get component post processing behavior and because we have this require component we know for sure that we're going to get one it's not going to return us null 
Um, if we didn't have this, we might want to also double check that um, post is not null after this, but because we have the require component, we're okay right now. With that now in our update method, what we can do is we can check, did we hit some key to tell us to cycle through our filters? And if so, we will cycle through. So we can say if input.get key down, and I'm gonna use key code f for this. Um, seems to make sense for cycling through filters. Filter starts with f. And if so, what we're going to do is we're gonna take a couple steps here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to increment this value by one. So currently negative one, it will go to zero, one, two, three, et cetera, until we hit the maximum size of our array, at which point we'll reset it back to negative one. So first thing we'll do is say current filter plus plus, just to increment it by one. And then we're gonna check, have we reached the end of the array? So we'll say if current filter equals filters dot length, we could even say is greater than or equal to just in case something incremented it at another time and we just want to double check for sure. So if it's equal to or greater than filters.length, that means that we're outside of the array and we need to go back to negative one. So we will say current filter equals negative one. And we're also going to remove any profiles that are on our post-processing behavior at this point. We're going to go back to just having no filter. So we'll say post.profile equals null. Else, we know that we are still within our array, and what we can do is we can set our post-processing behaviors profile to whichever particular index we are at in the array. So now we can say post.profile equals filters, and then the index of the current filter. So with all that in place, we are all set with our script, and we can jump back to Unity. In here, we need to go to our snapshot camera. We need to make sure that we add our camera filters component, and we want to make sure that we attach the uh, filters into our array here. So we're going to go back to our filters folder, and I'm going to drag old film onto the array. I'm going to drag ultra real onto the array, and finally I will drag trippy onto the array. Double check that the profile is currently null. We have nothing in there, so we're just seeing the basic view. And if we hit play now, what we can do is hit play. We can still continue to look around as normal. And if I hit the F key, we see that the snapshot view does indeed change to the old film. I can hit the space bar and still take a picture. Um, I can hit F again, we go to the ultra real, which is, like I say, pretty similar, but you see there's a little bit more contrast in the view there. And if I hit F again, we go to the trippy view where everything has really changed um, the colors as well as that aberration is kind of stretching out the colors into these weird rainbow effects. So if I hit space here, we'll take a picture of that as well. And sure enough, if we go back to our snapshots folder and we refresh it, we see that we are now getting pictures that are taken with these filters applied. So again, you can use this for player effects where if players want to put different filters onto their screenshots, or if you need um, to apply a particular effect while you're taking pictures um, either for development purposes or if you want to share a particularly cool effect on a screenshot um, on your dev blog or something like that, you can use this to apply these different image effects onto your snapshot camera. Hope you found this helpful. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.